everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tap House Talks, brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. They are experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. When you book with them, it costs you nothing extra on your trip, and you help support the channel and all the content that we produce here. So check them out, dreamsunlimitedtravel.com, for a free, no-obligation quote today. It is also brought to you by our Patreon supporters. We could not do this without you. And if you want to learn more about how you can get exclusive content from different members of the Diz team, you can head over to patreon.com slash disunlimited. Well, hello, hello, hello. I am Ryan. And I am here today at Disney's Hollywood Studios outside of my favorite attraction, Baseline Tap House. And I am here with a very special guest. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce the one, the only, Chloe. Hi. Chloe, Hi, welcome Rena. back to Thank Tap you. House Talks. I know that you have been, uh, you were in an episode. Uh, it, it's been a while now, but it was you, Hannah, and me. That was in like August. Yeah. I can't but believe it's I, been so long. You and, and then I. you and I were in an episode, more than one episode actually, I believe. So um, yeah, Disney Hills we die on. And then we also did one about the anniversary that I believe ended up being a Patreon oh, exclusive right. Tap House Talk. So. But the Hills we die on was before I worked alongside you. That was, so, yes. Actually, was the a, anniversary one was too. My first Diz uh, appearance. This is your first one-on-one -on -one Tap House Talks. You will be grilled. There will be a testing. Oh, I'm ready. So, I'm thank ready. Thank you for being here. I want to give you a cheers here. Yeah. Right here. Cheers. There you go. Cheers. <laughs> um, we are drinking the Hazy Little Thing IPA right now uh, at Bayside Tap House. As of recording this, there were two two lines missing out of the beer section. So I'm guessing they're getting ready. If it's not out uh, by the time this is published, getting ready for hopefully a holiday Holiday offering. season. Yeah, they had a celebration one from Sierra Nevada last year that was really good. So I'm thinking maybe they'll bring that back. But the Oktoberfest is gone. It made me a little bit sad. But I am happy to be here. I'm happy to be sitting outside at Hollywood Studios. It is finally just a little bit cooler. I mean, it, when I say a little bit, it was like 85 degrees We're not breaking today. a sweat walking to the tram. Yeah, well, speak for yourself. Um, <laughs> I always break a sweat. That's a win. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, today we're going to have a fun conversation that was actually brought to us by one of our Patreon supporters. Um, we put out a call for topics uh, to talk about. We felt like it had been a while since we had a Tap House Talks. And um, one of the most, uh, uh, one of the nicest people you'll ever meet, who always introduced himself to me, and I always love it every time he does, Peter Gardner. Peter Gardner here. If you ever meet Peter Gardner, which you might have already met him, he'll come up to you to shake your hand and say, Peter Gardner. Aww. And he is just the, uh, he does a an amazing impression of Harrison Ford. You gotta oh. hear it. It's great. He's got a great voice well, for that. Well, thanks, Peter, for uh, the recommendation. Thanks, Peter. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, we put a call out. We said we were looking for topics, and Peter Gardner came back with, sorry, my phone keeps um, zooming in on it for some weird reason. He came back with favorite place at Walt Disney World for personal nostalgia that gets you every time. And I thought, who better to have this conversation with than the nostalgia queen herself? Chloe. Um, <laughs> I'm so, so proud I'm going down for this. I, uh, I'm on my tombstone. I, I mean, what's your, you do, uh, so Chloe is a uh, Diz theme park correspondent, so she writes for our website. She has some articles. What's the one that you do um, that's like Chloe's Treasures? Is that what it's called? It's my weekly roundup of vintage finds. It's mostly eBay at this point. It's eBay items that I do deep dives on. I try to find rare things from that are at least vintage, so 20 years and older from the theme parks. And I try to find reasonable offers for them too, like reasonable prices. I have way too much fun doing it though because that's my normal like Friday night thing that I do. I'll like pop a movie on and I'll just like scroll on my phone and look for vintage things. And I'm just naturally a very nostalgic person. Movies, music, um, theme you, park goodness. You feel like you were born in a different time. I, do, I yeah. wish I was born in a different time. Yeah. I say that a lot, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, she's got style, she's got grace, she's Miss. United States. Nostalgia in yeah, your miss, face. Miss, yeah, I miss nostalgia <laughs> in your face. Um, um, but yeah, nostal what does nostalgia mean to you though when it comes to like the parks I here? I think just in general when I hear nostalgia, I, I kind of think of like a warm cookie. Like that mm. feeling of like when you get a cookie that's still a little bit gooey that comes yeah. out of the oven, you know, and it's you like nice have and cozy. it. Yeah, and it yeah. feels a little like being wrapped up in a blanket on a cold day. Like Aww. that sort of very, it's like an internal hug. What do you think of? I think of a hug. That's the, I feel like that's the best way to describe it. Um, I, I, I don't know. I feel like that's, it's the biggest reason why I'm a theme park fan today is to relive those memories with new friends and like my family one day. And like, I don't know, you want to relive those warm, fuzzy memories that you had years ago in the parks that they are now. Yeah. So I just feel like it's such a, I don't know, quintessential reason to why people love the theme parks today because they remember coming as 
young ones and you know yeah but yeah a warm hug is the best way to describe it I feel like it's just comfortable it's cozy and I try not to get too reliant on nostalgia but it is a little hard especially like I don't know uh, social media and like merchandising is the way it is they're like like the whole vault collection for the 50th anniversary I was all over that the Kate Castle t-shirts the opening year of Magic Kingdom uh, like varsity bomber jacket and I don't know all that stuff like I lean so heavily into that because it's like the bygone era when the good old days kind of stuff you know it's cozy I think it was Andy Bernard from The Office who said like it, it's that feeling of like you never know you're in the good old days you're like nobody I forget right. the exact quote no, I'm sure I just, people will tell me but yeah you know? no I just wrote about that actually because um the Castle Dream Lights is we're, we're approaching holiday season once again at Walt Disney World wow. and we're once again receiving confirmation that there's no Castle Dream Lights and like I can't help but think we took those years for granted it was yeah. six short years of the best Christmas display Magic Kingdom's ever had. Also, and it's like, talk about like the uh, most beautiful you if you were fortunate enough to see it. The most beautiful, beautiful you could ever see Cinderella Castle. Yes, like ever. I, I it just it was something out of a dream. We're lucky we have Spaceship Earth now the way it is. Like it feels like it was always like that. I can't imagine going back to no points of light on Spaceship Earth. But it just makes me feel like lights are so simple in you know. To, to look at but well, like, they're like, so mesmerizing for people to stare at it's it just, looks like one of those things that you're like this should have always been here right like I, like I can't moth, believe like, it uh... hasn't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no no don't look at the light <laughs> well I, I so do you have a nostalgia thing that you know is specific like that I do that go off right away I, yeah because I so, think we should specify like it could be a place it could be um like you just said, like you're really into like nostalgic style, you're yes. into vintage, you know, yeah. and they're like, you were saying that and I got really nostalgic for something I'll talk about in a minute, in yeah. a few minutes, but like, so like anything across that board, mm -hmm. I think, like yeah. whatever it is. So, I mean, memories and nostalgia are deeply intertwined with a lot of sensory, a lot of sensors, right? Yeah. So like sense. Smells, um, yeah. smells. Oh, you just said sense. I'm repeating it. Smells. And uh, smells. Right. <laughs> you know. Also sense. Yeah. Um, but for me, especially, it's auditory. So there are specific sound effects and music background area music loops. I just posted an article about that too because I love background area music loops, especially from like the '90s, early 2000s at Epcot. Anyways, um, so when we were talking about doing, you know, what do you think of that gives you that personal nostalgic feeling at Walt Disney World? I thought of three specific things. So. Oh. Do you want me to go all three now or like one by one? We can like bounce, bounce back and forth. Uh, let's bounce back and forth. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to start with something that I'm sitting kind of like adjacent to, um, Star Tours, because Star Tours has been an, a mainstay attraction for me. It's gone through some changes, yes, but like honestly, I welcome the changes. I love the, the different destinations. I do miss Captain Rex, though. Mm -hmm. um, but the Star Tours chime has not changed since the beginning chime. of the attraction. Oh. The little chime, like, before each, um, you know how, like, when you enter the queue, it's like a little spaceport? Yeah. And they play a chime. It's like, doo 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 before any announcement. Oh, okay, yeah, And then yeah, before yeah. you're boarding your simulator, your flight simulator, it's just, it's the same little, what is that, four notes that play? And it's been the same since I was a kid. So no matter the changes that it's gone through, just hearing that little chime, it was my one of my very first text ringtones I ever had on like my first flip phone. Like that, that and the Disney Cruise Line tone. Those are my two like notification tones. So it just that rings personally for me. Yeah, no, I, you know, you said that, and it's funny. And I know it's not Disney. I mean, they were owned by Disney for a hot second. Um, was uh, Power Rangers? I think of the do, 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 do. their communicator used to be the chime for their thing. That sounds like Kim Possible. Do, yeah, do, 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 do. well, that was the thing. Everyone used to be like Kim Possible. And I'm like, no, oh. it was from Power Rangers first, and it, there's yeah. a different version. But <laughs> but yeah, it, you know that same thing. Or like, I'm sure people have it for like this. Star Trek has that same sort of very specific sounds to it and things. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I uh, that's a that's a pretty that's a good one because you know if we're talking like auditory. I definitely, something deep within me stirs when I hear the choo-choo, all aboard. Oh, yeah. Like the Disney, the, 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 the railroad. railroad. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I mean, I know I, I have a, a special affinity for, um, it, it's very it's windy out here today. It's a little breezy out here, today, out so here. Getting, uh, Stuff's getting blown away. <laughs> um, but I definitely, you know, I grew up on a railroad. My, You know, it was a very small uh, amusement park, uh, or theme park in uh, Massachusetts called Edaville Railroad. And my grandfather was like an operating manager there. So I... And you could hear the train kind of blow that whistle wherever you were in 
in the par in the town. And so hearing that like whistle, it like immediately makes me feel like I'm in my hometown. Yeah. Like in a kid, because where I grew up, like in the woods, you could you could in hear the woods. that. Yeah, I grew up in the woods. Honey. The sticks. Um, no, I, I yeah. know that you shared that before. <laughs> like a about... beaver built my house. Yeah, I like <laughs> it was in a dam by a river. No, but I know that you shared before that the railroad aspect of Disney parks means a lot to you. Yeah. Well, it's the, you know, it's, there's a lot to it because there's there's even just the sound of like the train the train like you know coming Trudging in and the brakes. Yeah, and yeah. just the fact that it's still there. You know, like if you're ever fortunate enough to like start to walk into a Disney park right as the railroad is pulling into the or the railroad the train is pulling into the railroad station you're it's just like it's one of those that immediately you're like whether it's your first visit or you've been coming for your whole life it just does something to you I think yeah. where because like it's very romantic it's very picturesque it's very it's very, it's very baroque it's, it's very here it's to right me now. it's like the park and theme park you know, like yeah. it's, it's, it, you're doing a roundabout around the kingdom and you're exploring the different areas and you're able to just like sit back and relax and take in the vibes. And yeah. it's very, I don't know. Hit me with another one. Um, I'm going to stick with my auditory theme here. We're going to hop over to Magic Kingdom and. Well, we're just there. We're on the railroad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. True. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Staying in Magic Kingdom. <laughs> um, and my next two are specifically in Tomorrowland. Mm-hmm. Tomorrowland. This is perfect because my next one is Tomorrowland. That's oh, funny. Oh, no, so do we have the go. same one? No, I, we absolutely do not. Okay, so. okay. So mine comes with a bit of a personal story. I think I might have told it on some show before. I'm not sure. But I was a scaredy cat when I was a kid. I grew up going to Disney World. Oh, God, I hope ours aren't the same thing. <laughs> okay, go ahead. No. I think you know the they, story They might me, be, though. yeah. Um, I, I grew up uh, coming to Walt Disney World a lot. I've been coming since I was a little, little tiny tyke. And um, I had the opportunity to do roller coasters at a very young age because I was also tall for my age. And so when I was four, I just became a big sister. So I thought I was brave enough to do Splash Mountain and Tower of Terror at the time. Ooh. Splash Mountain was fine. I was a little scared. But I did Tower of Terror, and I basically ruined any attraction for me. I didn't really trust even Dumbo the Flying Elephant after that point because yeah. Tower of Terror was just too scary for me. They did a good job immersing me, and now it's one of my favorite attractions. Spoiler. But... It took me a solid seven or eight years for me to work up the courage to do... Um, I eventually got back into Thunder Mountain again because I used to do that as a kid, but I w was like a 9, 10, 11 year old. My parents would have to do baby swap with me to do Space Mountain, mm -hmm. and they loved Space Mountain. So I would hang out in like the dark tunnel area, and I was terrified because I knew that the watching the old VHS tapes, the vacation <laughs> planning VHS yeah. tapes that I loved so much, I knew that people sat in a singular line and it's in the dark and that just petrified me thinking about doing that with my parents and they wouldn't be able to like hold me next to me or I'm gonna hold on to the camera because they're so this, we got a heavy breeze. breeze we got a heavy yeah. breeze yeah um so I yes so long story short I went to Universal Studios with a group of girls that were around my age at the time so peer pressure I silently uh was peer pressured into doing dueling dragons at the time and that was my first ever big giant roller coaster, anything beyond Big Thunder Mountain. And it was inverted and uh, as dangly you know, legs. Dangly legs. Oh, I took a giant step <laughs> into yeah. bravery at that, that day. But after I did that and I had so much fun, I knew that I could do rock and roller coaster, I could do Space Mountain. So at that point, um, I would think I was 12 or 13, like I said. The first time I walked through Space Mountain, I was kind of angry at myself for how long it took me. In retrospect, I was still a kid, but like I could have been coming through the star tunnel so many more times than I did because that star tunnel has not changed. Um, with the stars like zooming past you as you're walking, but the star tunnel music, mm. that star tunnel music hits me every time and it just, I love it so, so much. When we went to Mickey's Not So Scary a couple mm. weeks ago, and the only ride that we did all night, because it was the pitch black Space Mountain version, yeah. which was so much fun. If you have the chance to do it, Mickey's Not So Scary is the best. Um, I just remember we were we were just like running through the queue because it was empty. But just hearing that little clip of the Star Tone music, I was like, oh, I'm home. Well, that, it like it just felt the, so the cozy. Little... Yes. And yes. then like the thing, it feels very it's like very Tomorrowland spa. And, yeah, yeah, like, it ooh, does. Let the robot massage your shoulders. <laughs> space, now. space ambient music. Yeah. Yeah, I love for it sure. so much. I can definitely see that for sure. Like, it, I think also there's a thing that sort of happens when you go on that ride because you know, it's there's so many noises, there's so many sounds. It's such a wide open space that then mm -hmm. when you go to Space Mountain and you get into a smaller tunnel 
And you know, even as, as loud as it can get with all the people lined up in there, it still does have a little bit of a deafening property to it, like a noise yes. canceling almost. Yeah. So it starts to feel like those noise deprivation tanks almost. Like it, yeah. it starts to have that sort of weird, like you're now going to outer space. Yeah. Like, very, I, I could definitely. It's I would, enveloping I would agree you, with but that. Yeah. you don't. It doesn't feel that claustrophobic either. It's just like in all the best ways. So. Guys, I want this, I can oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so mine is. Mine is in Tomorrowland. Mine is outside of Space Mountain. Mm -hmm. um, and, but it is. Uh, so when I was a kid, I was also very like, uh, you know, very afraid of all these sort of things. I did a flume ride that scared me and I never trusted my mother or anybody again because I, I was afraid of heights so it turns out it, the drop is really the thing maybe I'm most afraid of I think yeah. I might have died from falling in a different life <laughs> but like it is one of those things where I'm like okay I'm not going to do any of this and uh, but my grand my grandfather used to go on all of it and my with and my brother used to do it all even as scared as he was uh -huh. um, and so uh, my great grandmother used to live down in Florida and my grandparents came down here every year and I'd save up money, you know, collecting soda bottles and stuff like that, and then turning them into the recycling factory because that back then you got like five cents for whatever, you know. Um, and um, uh, so we each had to have like save up fifty dollars, and then sometimes we'd go with grandma every now and then. Every other year, or every like three years, my mom would be able to come too or something. So I don't think we came every single year, but we we got to come at least like every other year, or every couple of years, and. Um, but like some of those memories of just like sitting with my grandma on a bench and just kind of people watching, it never felt like I was really like missing out on anything. And I really remember never really being like bored because I was like hanging out with my grandma and I liked hanging out with my grandma, but also knowing that my grandma liked sitting on the bench and just kind of sitting there and watching. And it wasn't, you know, I know some people would be like, oh, look at all the crazy people, like how they're dressed and what they do or whatever. It was never any of that. It was just kind of sitting. It was just existing there. Yeah, and admiring yeah. and taking in the sights. Like it was a lot of that, like yeah. sort of just like being. I don't even know that I know how to do that anymore. You know what I mean? Like sitting and being in that moment and just like taking it in and like appreciating it. And she was very good about appreciating it. There's a squirrel that just almost crawled up my leg. So there was As a little bit of- As we're sitting here trying to appreciate baseline panic house. in my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like I do have that same thing. And it's funny that you told that story about you finally getting brave at like 12, because I wasn't brave. I was peer pressure, but I was 18. Cause I came for oh. my grad night and um, one of those things at grad nights, they dropped us back then at the bus, like uh, the area where you entered the park for that was in Tomorrowland. And so the first thing everybody was like, come on, Rhino, we're going on Space Mountain. And I was like, <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> like it was literally that. And I was like, okay. And I did that and Thunder Mountain in the same night. And so like, I also have that sort of very specific, Tomorrowland specific because I still almost have that I can almost feel it in my body, mm -hmm. what it felt like on that night in like June, you know, whatever year, you know, and it was, and it, it was like being there with like all these classmates, you know, there and they had these special concerts set up and things. So like, it, it's not even about that. It was just like really about being brave when you're with friends. Like, and I'm not saying you can't be brave when you're with family, but it was different where it was like, I had that same sort of feeling where you're like, I can't believe I missed out on this as long as I did, especially when I did Splash Mountain for the first time. I thought that was just an up and down. I'm like, I'm not getting on that flume ride. I fell for this once in my and life. I'm not doing it again. And you fall into a briar patch? Like, I thought, like, yeah, I'd come I thought, out there, like, picking I was like, briars <laughs> out of me. Why isn't everyone, where, how's no one's eyes gone? I, like, I have yeah, a colorful like, imagination. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's with any kid, though. You don't see where they go until, like, you're on that bridge and you see them, like, do the roundabout, you know, at yeah. the drop. But, I don't know, you just see them go down, there's a splash, you're like, they're landing in a briar patch. Like, they guys, got, this they isn't did. safe. They did. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I, I, it's funny, because that was going to be my next one, was the bench. Like, I, I, I feel, I have a strong feeling, and I think part of that is some of those sounds that you're talking about are still present. Yeah. And so it, it I, I think, um, I know that they say, I, I think it's smell is the strongest olfactory memory yeah. trigger. But I do think like uh, the sound is like next, and sound does that for me a lot sometimes. Yeah. So very, especially when you get those two things folded in together, and you, it just feels like it transport you yeah. to like another time. And I mean, that is the purpose of, the, like specifically, like Main Street USA and things like that. You know, yeah. Disney, Disney used to excel in that sort of thing. I'm not would, saying they don't still, but I would even say my two picks so far: the Star Tours and Space Mountain. Like I can't pinpoint it, but there is a specific scent tied to those attractions too. Like everything said, like the Pirates of the Caribbean, water, or Hong Kong. So many things. Batteries changed. <laughs> Flight of Passage. You know, like the fresh 
water scent yeah. or somewhere in the orange groves. Um, but I feel like there's specific scents tied to like each building that's here because yeah. every, I don't know, just unique. It's um, fun. Well, it's, it's also one of those things where, so like in film school, one of the things I really enjoyed was um, we kind of, uh, a lot of it was about working backwards where it'd be like, okay, this is your favorite movie. Why is it your favorite movie? And, and sometimes it was like very nostalgia based or things like that. But sometimes it was also like subconscious, like an E.T. being like, I, I come from a family of divorce and that sort of thing. And, and, you know, feeling like Elliot and like not realizing that there was a lot of those like parallels in that yeah. movie. Because for me, I just registered it as this like alien buddy movie. And, you know, and he so I, I, I think like when you start to analyze things like, OK, what is it about Disney that we love and going backwards? Yeah. There is something that's sort of fascinating where you're like, how do I pick apart the separate pieces? But even when you have those separate pieces, I think the way we experience it and the people we experience it with, that's the lightning that makes it unique. Yes. You know, it kind of sews all that together yeah. and makes this like really special thing. Yeah. Well, you had a third. What's I do have third? a third. Probably the most cozy um, because this is an overall feeling I get, but a sound, a, spe a specific sound definitely takes play here too, is the people mover in Tomorrowland. Oh, okay. So just being inside one of those blue people the mover ride vehicles. Paging. No, it's Tom the chime. Morrow. There's a people mover chime. You and it was a lot actually, of chimes. I do. This was another one that I had on my phone for a bit after Star Tours and Disney Cruise Line. But um, this chime actually went away for a few years and it just came back for the 50th anniversary, I want to say. They updated the, the narration and they brought the people mover chime back. And the first time I went on it and heard the chime was, was back, I, was, I got emotional. I was like, oh my God. Like, yeah. I didn't even realize it was gone all this time. I think it was only like five or six years it was missing, but that specific time, but the, the feeling of being in the people mover, especially after dark, Tomorrowland just hits so much differently, more than any other land at Magic Kingdom. I feel like once the sun sets, Main Street is beautiful, of course, but Tomorrowland at night, you can I feel like you can hear the background music more, and the people mover is just breezier no matter what time of year you visit, and then visiting all those attractions and coming in and out at night, and oh, the views, I think and it, I think it kind I of starts it. to feel, because you know, it, it, for me, I, I mean, mentally, it could not, it, it, not true, but you know, I associate so much of Tomorrowland because I think when I think Tomorrowland, I think Space Mountain. I associate so much of it with like future and space and these sort of things because, like, you know, you used to have Alien Encounter, all the stuff that was kind of alien out of our world uh, based. And, um, and I think that there is that sort of. Um, so I think at night, you're like, oh, it kind of is part of the theme. Because then also you see like the um, Astro Astro Orbiter, Orbiter, you know, and like yeah. it's you know all that movement and color Kinetic and everything. energy in yeah. Tomorrowland is exactly yeah. so good. The people yeah. mover, Astro Orbiter, and even just like the movement of people. It's just like three layers of just awesomeness. I love it. Yeah. Um, so uh, okay, those, those are I feel like are pretty three pretty good ones. So yeah. one of the fun things about when we try to record this podcast out in the. Um, wild in the parks is like you never know what's going to happen and I feel like sometimes I'm a magnet for people like <laughs> almost always sitting on my shoulder I which know. has kind of happened for the last couple of minutes yeah. so it's very like okay I feel like we're in a test where it's like maintain your train of thought blah 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 okay I have another one mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's I feel like it's more nostalgic recent but it's really not that recent thinking about it is okay. that when I moved to Florida, I didn't move here to be near Disney World. I didn't move here. My great grandmother, like I said, my whole life, she lived down here. She'd come up and spend the summer in Massachusetts, and then um, we'd sometimes come and visit Nana as much as we could, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, she lived to be 96, you know. Wow, good May for we her. all be so lucky. Good for her. Um, and I felt a like strong bond with her and stuff like that. Uh, but she passed away in January 2007, and then also like I had stopped going. Uh, to school because I couldn't afford it anymore, um, you know, and so there was a lot of these things going on and I felt my, my life was in a weird place and I just happened to have uh, like a really good friend in Massachusetts move here and they got a job working at Disney and they basically moved into a new apartment. It was sort of one of those where they're like, oh, I know that you're going through a lot of stuff. Maybe a change of scenery would help. Like, do you want to come down? And they're like, the rent for this apartment was like $300 a month. And I was like, I can do this. Like, so I like literally like set fire to my life essentially to move here. Hey, um, I mean, sometimes. I, I'm all about it. I want to do yeah. it again. I'm 100%. I want to like burn everything and, and try a new adventure again before it gets too late in life. I don't think it's ever too late in life, honestly. No, yeah. But I definitely think I want to have another solid chapter 
in, yeah. in a new exciting environment and see yeah. what that looks like because I you know I don't ever want to be afraid to take these jumps or these leaps on these rides or anything like that ever again yeah. life is a, life is a highway yeah. yeah I just came up with that right here that's good can you believe that ka chow I just came up with that too um, <laughs> <laughs> how original yeah how original um, no but I um, so this was a big it was a big thing it was the first time all my family lives the majority of them like 90% of them live within 15 minutes of each other and if they're not that close they're you know maybe an hour or two away so I kind of the only person who lived farther away I'd never moved out of my my, my like mom's house before I tried you know I would stay at college for like the week but I would come home every weekend uh, and so like coming here that was a big it was very scary it was very one of those like in retrospect I'd be like girl what were you doing um, <laughs> but my mom when we when we when I moved down here and she came down here that was the first time we'd ever gone to Animal Kingdom I'd never gone to Animal Kingdom until this time. And so um, I have this like sort of um, attachment to that because I was like, oh, we kind of had this thing where we were like, we didn't know what it was originally. And so like going there, and this was like late 2007, it was very much like, wow, I can't believe we never came here. But also um, it was the first time I ever did Dinosaur. And oh. being that person oh gosh, that I was so afraid of rides. The scent of rides. dinosaur. Yeah. The, talk about the sound effects and yeah. the preach. Oh my goodness. Don't yeah. get me started. No, it's, it's, a little, list. it's a little bit of everything <laughs> because there is some auditory stuff yeah. in dinosaur. I mean, come on. There's like a cadence to the to the pre-show where it's like the hello there. But yeah. then Felicia Rashard comes in and she's like, well, it seems a, I've arrived just in time to correct a little misstatement. There's a whole like, countdown a, to extinction a, loop, like the cue music that plays. So I never, it wasn't changed. that. It was never. But, I never but did the that. music hasn't changed since then. So all the music that you hear in like the museum part, and then when you're loading your vehicle, that's all the same. Yeah, I just I have a very like I remember going on it. I remember being so scared as like 22 year old. Mm -hmm. Like I am so afraid to keep my eyes open on this ride, <laughs> and like I loved it so much. It I would, took me a hot second. I too. would go. I would keep going. When I became a cast member, I went all the time to be like. Every time I was in the park, I was like, people would be like, Everest. And I'd be like, no, can we please go on? Yeah. I wouldn't do, I didn't do Everest till like two or three years after that. Two years after that. I didn't do Splash Mountain till two years so after that. So you were 30? Girl, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. This interview is over. Was this yesterday? This interview is over. Cut the, <laughs> cut the feed. Um, yeah. So um, the, it, it's just one of those, like, that ride specifically, even like Restaurantosaurus. It's just that area. I'm not saying Fossil yeah. Fun Games. I'm not saying that area. I'm just saying, like, the specific the part. The Dino Institute area. It just has a little bit of, like, it still feels old school Disney, but for me, there really hasn't been a lot of rides, like Dinosaur and, I understand this, Indiana Jones at Disneyland, which I didn't experience until 2015, but also is incredible. And those are, there aren't other, they didn't replicate that ride system anywhere else, you know? And the, it, it's like... In terms of like domestic parks and reusing stuff like coasters, you know, we've been on coasters. We, you know, I'm not saying that like Space Mountain, Thunder Mountain, they're the same, but like it's kind of a similar idea. Like, you know, um, rock and roller coaster, these ones that it's like a rail and a thing. This is like this weird motion simulator thing that for like little, it the little kid and like me. It actual ride scenes with the simulator type vehicle. Well, yeah, it was the, yeah. it's the best of the best, baby, because you got audio animatronics, but it still feels like you're transported to another world. But also like it felt like, especially back then, because it got lightened up a lot after that. It was really dark. It was really intense. It felt like you were going to be thrown out of this vehicle. I can buy a dinosaur. I still, to this day, before that ride closes, I am convinced that the Carnotaurus is going to catch up to a Jeep or the one that takes your photo is going to eat somebody. Have you ever seen? Get off. Have you ever seen Clifford with Martin Short? No, I know. We talked about this recently, and I we've got a I've got a one. We do. If, you, I know if the anybody's movie. seen it out there, you know what I'm talking about. The the end scene of the movie is takes place at Dinosaur World, which I thought was a real theme park as a kid, and I wish it was. But that's what I thought of when I used to ride dinosaurs. I thought that was going to happen. <laughs> so we need to watch it. Yeah, but but that that definitely has like, and I think it's like what you've been talking about. I think it's a it's a it's sort of like a. You know, Bill Nye is the narrator in the queue. You know what I mean? Oh, my goodness. And I forgot about that. So there's, like, that's kind of baked into it, too. Obviously, Felicia Rashad's out there. That's baked into it, too. Obviously, so Dr. Like, Seeker is out there. One of the from most CSI. quirky, iconic yeah. Disney attraction-specific characters. Like She's still upset she doesn't have a Hello dinosaur there. puppet. I'm I, kind of upset about it, too. You know? I'm at eBay. Hello there. I guess I'll just pay... 
some good prices on eBay. I'm sure we can find whoever the original distributor was and still get one. You know what's like killing me though? This is off topic. When we went to Dino Land the other day, in the gift shop, the Dino, the Dinosaur Treasures, yeah. they have giant rubber Carnotauruses, which they're now sold out of. They have puppets everywhere decorating the shelves. And I'm like, if you guys sell the barcode, can I just have that one? <laughs> like, that's on the shelf, please? Like, I'm tempted. I would have asked. I'm I tempted. Asked. Like, yeah, I'll give you, you money, know. please, right? I don't know. If we know anyone in merchandising who can help us out, please, we'd <laughs> right. each like a little dinosaur puppet. I have, I have some other questions for you, too, but yeah. You know what's crazy <laughs> is I, I think when I was a cast member, I, uh, not when I think, I, when I was a cast member, there was, um, you know, there's, the, for people who don't know this, there's, uh, uh, like a store that exists for cast members that's like sometimes it's like overflow of park merchandise ends up there and you mm -hmm. get it at a discounted rate or or maybe it's sometimes stuff is damaged but you can buy it like for super cheap and I, when my nephew was born in like 20 uh, 2009 and it was like for his first birthday in like 2010 or his second birthday 2011 I got them I remember a I'm talking like three feet tall Carnotaurus plush and it had like leathery skin so it wasn't like fabric it was yeah. like that sort of thing and I'm there's a part of me where I was like who's that plush I'd like it back yeah I know you're not alive? using did it did he escape in the middle of the night <laughs> what did he come alive did he escape in the middle of the night I don't know that he had the same fear of Toy Story that we did but you know oh. um, you got anything else did you think of anything else like everything well I'm everything that this park used to be I'm living through Star Tours and Tower of Terror and like remnants of the old park here but this park is highly nostalgic for me, which is why I like being here today now. Um, yeah, a lot of old Epcot too, but like Spaceship Earth. Yeah. There's a lot of sense and... I was trying to go through because I'm like, you know, one of the things is like when I first moved here, it's so weird, it's not really nostalgic, but when I do see the Morimoto Asia building at Disney Springs, I, I do feel like I had quite a number of like, Fun evenings at, at mannequins. downtown Disney, but I do think about mannequins specifically. So there is that element. I was too young. But it's like it was. It was one of those where maybe I wish I'd visited more. Um, but it it it's like that sort of like oh, it's like a little like an ode to it. I feel like there, but um, you know I miss that. But Disney Spring has is so radically different from what yeah. downtown Disney was. Even space wise, I mean we're. We, where we would used to park is now like areas that have shops and stuff in them, you know? Because it's like oh a spider gosh. web now and it used to be a straight line. I wish the Virgin Records store was still here. Oh, don't even, I that love was like, that store. That was the place for me. When they had those little booths I was that you so could afraid to go to the second CDs. story because I was afraid of heights. Yeah, so I'd be like, aw. come on, you got to get upstairs. There's cool stuff upstairs. I but remember yeah. I bought my, it wasn't my first cassette, but it was the, one I, the very first one I purchased my own kid money. I bought the Backstreet Boys. You bought it there? I bought my Backstreet Boys oh, wow. cassette yeah. tape there. Yeah. You know what? I bought in the middle of the night for some reason. I was like, I have to learn how to dance. So I went <laughs> and I bought the Justin Timberlake Sexy Back uh, tour. So it's like him and Timbaland. It's the whole concert and I still have it. But oh the DVD God. of it and we would learn the dances in my You know apartment. what I mean? That yeah. reminds me. Remember when you could um, you could get an iPad or iPod Nano or whatever and you oh, could yeah. engrave on the back? I got sexy back on the, on the back of my hot pink iPod Nano. It's funny because it's on the back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, exactly. I got it. Yeah. I got where you're going with yeah. that. I, I was, didn't even love that song that much. I thought it was funny. I like that album, but it's fine. But I'm also nostalgic for it, like yeah. our conversation. Uh, I was trying to think about Hollywood Studios because I mean I worked here for so many years like it was eight years I think like to the day it was like eight full years That's um, right, yeah. but like I worked at Lights Motors Action yeah, it's not here though so not everything that I kind of have that nostalgic feeling for it's gone and I'm not saying like oh I wish it was still here but when I come into the park now it's so different yeah. There's, it's just like I don't really have the feelings for the other side of the park. Maybe like the, maybe like the the Fantasmic Stadium. I still get this kind of little bit of a feeling, you know. I even even though I feel like I don't like it as much as I used to and stuff, but yeah. you know, I still remember like when I first got that ID. Like one of the first things they did was go watch Fantasmic and like driving from my apartment and being able to watch that and being like, ah, look what I can do, everybody. <laughs> but like still having that being like in awe of the show. Mm -hmm. And since it is still that same stadium, I do have a little bit of that feeling for it but yeah a lot of that stuff I feel like is gone but I also think maybe I like Baseline Tampa because sitting here it is like the top of what was straight, uh, Streets of America the Osborne lights used to stand yeah. right here and I sort of have that like pour one out for the memories feeling here so it's like we're all yeah <laughs> so um, 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I think that's, I don't want to say that's it. I'm sure we're going to remember a bunch of them, but I didn't really, so growing much. up, I never stayed in any of the resorts. Um, you know, we didn't eat at a lot of the restaurants or anything, so I don't have that. I don't think I really met, met a lot of characters because I was always afraid of them a little bit, like they were going to snatch me. And, um, but I, I do. Wilderness Lodge for me. I do. I was going to say, not Wilderness Lodge, but I have Fort Wilderness because I oh, think it's the too. first one that when, like, my mom came down and she was, like, visiting, I was like, Mom, you'll never believe it. Can you believe there is a, um, like, a campground that's been here since it opened right here and we never knew? And so, like, I think she also has that nostalgic feeling. Yeah. So, like, she'd be like, listen, I want to rent a cabin at least for, like, two days so we can all be there together as a family and do this. Yeah. And I'm like, Mom, I hate to break it to you, but they've changed. Um, but... But I do you have. Guys, you should still like rent a camper or something, though. It's so well. That's the so first nice way she stayed there. They drove their camper down, and they were so proud of their camper. My mom and my stepdad. And um, I remember. So this is a, both a sad memory too. They parked there, and my mom wandered off, and somebody let her in her cabin. And I was like, "What?" I was like, "Were you just knocking on random doors?" Like, but they give her a tour, and she's like, "You'll never believe these cabins." Um, but I do, I do feel like I do have a lot of nostalgia to the um, movie theater that's there, the outdoor, the, with the roasted marshmallows. The Chippendale yeah. campsite, campfire Because every yeah. Halloween we would go and watch Hocus Pocus oh. um, out there and roast. Did you know Christmas time they play Muppet Christmas Carol? I did not actually. Oh, maybe we should do that this year. Yeah, um, should. But my my, uh, I also like that, like where she was camped out is like my my uncle Paul's partner. Uh, died of pancreatic cancer Aww. and so um, I kind of remember sitting there and like kind of learning that he had like a week and whatever and like having that final like sort of conversation about all of it and yeah. then uh, my uh, managers uh, at Disney wouldn't give me the time off for it. So I very that is a sad have story. A very negative nostalgic feeling toward my. the uh, a specific manager who used to be here and I will not say their name but they were a terrible okay. person. Um, Fort Wilderness though for me I mean you know my story about falling out of the camper as a baby. <laughs> it's one of my favorite stories. And I, my Just, I think stayed you need to retell it on this. Okay so <laughs> this is the reason why my parents think that like I'm a cracked out like Disney person because <laughs> like I don't know that that's politically correct terminology but that's okay. What, we'll what would I say? My, I'm cracked in the head. Is well, yeah, I, well, like I was going to relate skull. it to uh, Humpty Dumpty, because <laughs> like, yes. you literally I'm fell Humpty off Dumpty. the wall. Yeah. yeah. So my parents and all had Chloe's vintage... kids couldn't put her back together. <laughs> yeah. Um, my parents, my mom is also a very vintage, eccentric, nostalgic person, like I am, uh, or I am after her, I guess. But they had a vintage '60s pop-up camper, and in the '60s, they didn't exactly have safety. I don't know. Safety. Period. Uh, the end. Period. End of sentence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In the campers, so the beds weren't exactly sealed off, and so as a newborn, they took me to Fort Wilderness, and I rolled out of the popped up, elevated off the ground bed. And in the middle of the night, they realized that I wasn't in the bed anymore, and they didn't realize that there was an opening that I could just fall out of. So they freaked out. They thought that I was no longer. She was gone. Here. They she was thought that I was gone. She was the Lindbergh baby. Gone in in multiple different ways. <laughs> um, Lindbergh baby? That's not correct. I have no idea. I don't know. Take snatched, taken, or no longer alive. They thought once something happened. So um, uh, they went outside and they saw that I was just lying there on the pavement, happy as a little clam, a creepy clam. A cre if you know, creepy you know, clam you know, glow. Yeah. You know, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> happy as a little clam, just lying there, no broken bones, nothing. I wasn't crying. But they think that that's like when I became like the Disney fiend that I am because I fell at it's Fort like Wilderness. It's like when Catwoman falls out of the window or was pushed out of the window and Batman returns. It's like when Patrick and falls all the cats licked her, and, and then he's smart. you got the Disney power from there. Okay. Do you yeah. want me to buy you a PVC suit to wear? No, cross, cross <laughs> the line. Maybe if it's if it's black or pink or something. Sure. What would be your well, if you were the if you were. <laughs> Michelle yeah. Pfeiffer is to Catwoman as Chloe is to Disney Humpty Dumpty. I don't think I like oh, that. That does analogy. not sound sexy at all. What would be your like? <laughs> okay, wait. It would be <laughs> she would Humpty be Dumpty. in a Miss Piggy outfit, okay. like so a pink like Britney so Spears. Chaperone. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> right. And then your your instead of the whip, you would have whoopie pies for uh, for. Uh, Gonzo, not Gonzo. She's Fozzie. Fozzie. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what your what your version of a whip would be. If I think I would have. Whip. Okay, how about this? I have a um, like a glittering pink bodysuit with the Kermit collar. Okay. 
and my special communication device is a banana phone. <laughs> Done. You just throw rap hits at everybody? Like <laughs> it's a that, it's frisbees? That clown yeah. honk every time I have to answer the phone like you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I think there's never been a better note to end a podcast on. Um, so thank you, Chloe, for having this conversation. Of thank you, Peter Gardner, out there for this suggestion. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Um, <laughs> and thank you, everybody out there, for watching or listening to this. If you are watching this on YouTube, please uh, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave us some comments about future topics. Because um, we're always open to different conversation things. Sometimes we just need to get it started. And I, I love uh, talking about what people want to hear us talk about. So uh, if you're listening to this, please rate and review podcasts wherever wherever you can do that. and uh, Or wherever you consume them. That would be a lot of help. And um, yeah, I mean, I would love to know what anybody out there listening or watching, like your sort of nostalgic feelings. It's going to make me emotional when I read them. I'm positive. Oh, same. So be kind. Be gentle. But we'd love to hear from you. Until then, we'll see you with another episode of Tap House Knocks. We say to you, cheers.